this is Jeannie and Carrie from Trendy Tree and today we're going to show you how to do a tomato cage Christmas tree. Now this is the first time that we've done this so we may try something and it may not work and if it doesn't we'll regroup and do it again. But we want to show you our new background, our new doors <laughs> that we did. Okay. I didn't do any of that. Well, they are pretty. I think they turned out good. Alright, the first thing you'll need for this project is a tomato cage. And you can get these at your local hardware store, Walmart. Uh, they're just galvanized steel. And some of, this is a green one. Some of them even come in different colors, which it doesn't really matter if you get one that's colored or not. But it does help, I think, if you get one that has the ring on the bottom. Uh, some of them will have an additional spikes on the bottom. And if, if you do, we've got another one like that, you could just bend those spikes to the inside so it'll sit down and have this little ring to help it be stable. We started out with a, a smaller one. This is probably about a 36 inch one. And the first thing we did was just take the top, uh, pinch it together and put a, a zip tie around it. Made a tee -tee. Yeah, a zip tie around it. And then we took a uh, pencil garland. This is a red a pencil garland that has green balls on it and just attached it at the bottom and just wound it around uh, the tree form, the tomato cage, and secured it. In a, every now and then we would come to a place where it would uh, secure to the metal. We just used the ties uh, of the pencil garland and just secured it. Now, I know we're going to have some gaps in places and we're going to have to fill in and we'll do that. We're going to make this out of a lime green wide foil. It's a 10 inch and we're going to use the ruffle technique. So we're going to cut uh, 10 inch squares of ruffles. We're doing ruffles or curls? Oh, well I don't know. You want to do curls? Let's do ruffles. Ruffles? Okay, so we're going to do ruffles. So to do the ruffles, uh, the mesh will just ha has a natural curl about it. Uh, and for the ruffles though, we want to turn that over and pinch up through the middle, go up through the middle so that you have the selvage edge on each side of your ruffle. You'll have some raveling. Anytime you cut mesh, you'll have some raveling. Uh, and we're going to do two layers of ruffles at a time. So we're going to put on two at a time. And I'm just going to start around the bottom. I don't think it matters if you start at the bottom, bottom or the top. But I'm going to lay those in the twist. And I'm just going to give it a couple of turns because we may uh, layer in some other products, like some ribbons or something. Say <laughs> <You mail. laughs> you, you cut your phone out while we're videoing? <laughs> you make me stay so attached. <laughs> okay, ruffles. <laughs> we may have to cut this video short because it's coming to cloud outside. We're here in the shop by ourselves. Everybody's already left us, so... Um, come to the cloud, we're going home. I think the ruffle technique will be good for this. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll try. You know, this is, like I say, this is trial and error. We'll just try it and see how it goes. I don't know exactly how many rolls of mesh it'll take. We'll just have to, of course you could count. We're putting two layers of ruffles in each twist. You could count the number of twists on the garland, but like I say, I'm sure we're going we're gonna to have some gaps and have to fill in some places, no doubt. We're just going to keep working all the way around. We'll just go ahead and fill in all the twists that we have. And then, like I say, I feel like we'll have some gaps where we'll have to come back in and, and fill in. But we'll go all the way around with the twist, and then we'll come back. Well, we're going on around the tree. And, oh, there's a big gap right there. Um, it might actually, might take two garlands. garlands to go around it to really, you know, cover it completely. <laughs> We're almost at the top of the tomato cage. And 
when you're working with like a, the pencil garland with the balls on it or the work wreath with the balls on it, it's always important to uh, twist it by the ties and don't twist it by the balls. <laughs> now. And if the ball comes off, you can always just hot glue it back on with a little hot glue. Well, I, <laughs> I have filled in my last... Okay, well hold on to that. Okay, we filled in all the used up all of the twist on the garland so now I'm going to go back and I see some gaps with, that we're going to need to fill in and what I'm going to do is use hold that I've got uh, the places that I can attach are on the uh, rung of the tomato cage and then here's one that's an in between place of the um, garland, garland. Okay, so to make a ruffle to fill in these gaps, I'm going to put my two ruffles together. Now you could use a chenille stem for this. You could just uh, lay that chenille stem right over the top and then give it a couple of twists from the bottom and then secure the stem to the tomato cage. I'm going to use, these are some ends that I cut off of a um, twig garland. Twig garland. I like them just because they small, they hold good and you can't see them, but just lay that over the top of your two ruffles and give it a couple of twists from the bottom. It's kind of hard on your fingers, I'll mess up my new nail polish. At least I'll give that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you take the uh, little ends and then just slide it right over, uh, right over the tomato cage and then just reach from the inside and give it a couple of twists and secure that in the hole. So we're going to need to do that in, in several places. I want to make this real nice and full. And and the, the pencil garland with the balls just gives it a little extra, a little extra bling. It costs a little more than regular garlands, but they give you a little extra decoration. I think we're going to have to have a few more. Now here is a place, let me show you this. Now here's a place toward the bottom that I don't have anything to attach my uh, cluster to. But what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to run a little piece of wire. So right there, I'm going to run a little piece of, piece of wire between the rung of the tomato cage down to that garland so that I have a crossbar there to add something to. And I'm going to do that with a uh, piece of um, twig garland. And this is just a piece of twig garland that we had left over. Um, we save everything around here. And uh, this is the little skinny things, the twist I had cut off of that. The twig garland is stiff. You can bend it, but it's still good and holds its shape well. So I'm just going to uh, wrap that around the frame of the tomato cage and then I'll have a place to attach some more curls to. Let's see, now I've got a little place that I can put like two clusters easy. Fill in that hole. And this is a wide foil mesh. I don't know if I said that at the beginning. It really gives good coverage when you're uh, using doing a project like this gives you more coverage more so than just a metallic mesh. Okay, let's see if there's there's a hole. But well, we've got a a hole there, but we've got a tomato cage support to put a couple on there. We've got lots of peppermint decorations. That would look good on this. I love red and green. Classic red and green. 
Well, this is lime green, but yeah. still. If you want to save a little money, you can make one ruffle, one ruffle out of like plain green, and then use your white foil on top of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I I like it. Now we've got this pointy cage on top, but now we're gonna uh, create some kind of a little topper to go up there. And what do you think about adding in ribbon strips? Our, our ornaments. Perfect. Okay. All right. Well, let's just run out to the warehouse and pick out some. Okay. Okay. Well, there's lots of different ways that you could decorate this. Now, you will have to go back and clip some strings. You could add in some uh, ribbon strips, any kind of ribbon. We have these. Uh, little ball sprays that are really cute. They don't show up that well on the website, but the, the balls are about an inch and a half, inch or inch and a half, and they're uh, velvet. They look like curled up pipe cleaners. Mm -hmm. And they have a little bit of white feather, but we're going to use those uh, to just decorate. Uh, we have them in the red and white, and then we have in the uh, red and green. And we're going to insert some of those and then we have this little uh, sequin top hat from Raz. It's hollow on the inside, and it comes in red and uh, black, and black, and then the silver. And we're going to just use that as a little topper. So we're going to finish that and see how that looks. Okay, it's back on. Well. We decided to take the little uh, red and white balls and just make a little topper for that. And then we took this uh, chalkboard ribbon. This is four inches and just wrote on, uh, wrote on it with different kind of uh, Christmas words, which is plain chalk, and just took strips and uh, put those uh, into the ties. And when you add a ribbon strip or anything like that, you always want to undo your tie and then put your ribbon in there and then twist it back. And now, uh, Carrie's got this chevron ribbon. This is really pretty ribbon. It has a, a velvet on one side and it's kind of satin on the other. And the center part is uh, a chevron in different colors of green. And we're going to cut some 14 inch strips and just pinch those in the center and add those in uh, to the twist. And we'll add in some. You know, we have some places that we'll need to add in a ribbon twist where we didn't have a where we added in our extra clusters and I'm just going to cut, uh, you can take a little piece of a chenille stand, excuse me, uh, any kind of tinsel or anything that you've got. Oh, I'm sorry. I just need to cut one more so I have right. to add. Throw me a pair of scissors too. And we're going to uh, dovetail the ends of the ribbon. Scissor hog. <laughs> well, you just fold the ribbon and then cut it from the folded side to just dovetail that, and make a nice little finish on your ribbons. Or you can just cut them at an angle either way. But we'll do that and then just pinch the ribbon in the center. And we're going to take a little piece of wire. You can use a floral wire, chenille stem and just twist around that and make a little pick. And then just go into the uh, tree in an area where you didn't have, where you don't have a twist tie on your garland to use and just secure it um, to the tomato cage frame. And then that's just going to give a little more color to it. So we're going to go in and add some of these strips all the way around. Oh. 
Okay, well, we, we did our uh, chalkboard ribbon, and then we added in our ribbon strips of this um, chevron ribbon. I like that. And then we just added in some ribbon strips at the top, too, and some more of the little Chanel balls. Now, we'll have to clip some strings. Uh, just clip most, most of those you can just pull out, but... Get a tape measure. Let's see how tall this is after we've finished it. What? I'll throw it. Did you <laughs> throw a tinsel on it? <laughs> well, it's wound up to be about 41 to 42 inches uh, all the way to the topper. Of course, you could decorate it lots of different ways. You could use these little uh, top hats for a topper. Uh, you could use ribbon strips. You could glue in some ornaments. You could use these little sequin hats. Uh, we have them in silver, red, and black for a topper. You could add in any kind of ribbon. You could make it out of any kind of mesh. I think you would want to use the wide foil mesh just because it gives better coverage. And uh, we used uh, two, two, two rolls, rolls for sure. For sure. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I would probably order three of the same color. Um, of course, you could use a combination you could use it uh, in different colors too. Um, put two different colors together. And I like the, the little garland with the balls. That gives it just a little extra too. So that's it. Thanks for dropping by. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll see our other videos or the rest of our videos. And bye. Cloud. It is coming up a cloud. We'll get, I feel like I got a horn. <laughs> well, if you do, you just can't see them. Oh. Is it on? Yes. <laughs> Hold up. I got to get situated. There's a string on the shirt, too. Oh, look. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like a big old bag. <laughs> oh, Lord. Hold on, I, got, I can't figure this out. this. <laughs> <laughs> there. What do you want me to do? Help, Help me. I'm home. You lost your hook. Here's my hook. I feel like a crocodile hunter. Oh, I think I broke my hook. No, it snaps on like that. Oh. Happy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hi. You didn't say anything about my nail color. Oh. I got my fall on. Um, a good choice. Well, I don't know. I'm undecided. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of, well, it's kind of yellow. I was going for like a chocolatey brown, but I, I don't know. I don't know if I could. Leave this on or not. Okay, we're almost to the top of the comedy. <laughs> My arthritis. <laughs> oh my gosh. We might have to shut down. Shut. And if the ball comes off, you can always just hot glue it back on with a little hot glue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
just sweating. <laughs> That's a little short. <laughs> so my dad. Well, I feel like mine, when I'm looking at these videos, my part is taking <laughs> <Can you laughs> <have that? laughs> Well, another thing you could do too, if you want, you know, save a little money, is you could do, uh, you could make one refill. <laughs> Well, here's ten pair. How many? Ten. Ten. <laughs> ten pair scissors. 